Hi, I'm Aiden from Truck Boss. Uh, today we're going to be installing a Truck Boss 7 on this 6.5 foot box. We also have a Truck Boss 6 and a Truck Boss 8 for 5.5 foot and 8 foot boxes respectively. Throughout this install, I'll be showing the subtle differences in the installation methods of both of those products as well. Any installation of a Truck Boss deck, I like to think of it in four easy steps. First being rails and legs, second being the surface, third being the sides, and fourth being the additional accessories that you get put on there. We'll be going through this in those four different steps. So for the first step of this install, we'll be doing the rails and the legs. And for that, I'm going to need our rail boxes, which are box 10. It's a different number for the box for Truck Boss 6 and for Truck Boss 8. But you can find the corresponding number in your owner's manual, or you can mark, look on the side and it says rail of rail capture, and it's marked off. I'll also need box 6, which is our hardware box. It includes the legs. Everything else that I don't require at this moment, I'll put off safely to the side. We'll now be starting our first step of attaching the rails and the legs onto the truck box. Our first box that we're going to be opening is our Truck Boss RF bracket box. These are two angle brackets that will be installed in the front box corners of the truck box. We strongly recommend installing them as they're there to prevent any kind of truck box failure. Our installation procedures for these angle brackets will be included on another video that you can find on our site. The second box that we'll be opening up for our rail and rail capture install is our box 6. This includes all the hardware and our legs that we'll be using to install our truck box. First of all, we'll be opening up packing list, making sure that all the components are included in our hardware box. Our owner's manual, which we'll be putting off into a safe place on the side. And our six clamps that are included for a truck box 6 and a truck box 7. A truck box 8 has eight clamps and they'll also be included in box six. Just put these off to the side. We'll also be pulling out our F channels. These are just aluminum angle brackets that have a rubber foot on top and they'll be installed just above our rail capture hold down clamps, as you can see here. Now we're ready to install our rails and legs. We'll be looking at our rail boxes. They come in two separate boxes as they're pre-assembled. Box A being the driver's side rail that includes the wiring. Box B being the passenger side rail. We only need box A for now, so we'll just put box B off to the side. We're now gonna remove the driver's side rail out of box A. rail capture install piece which we're about to show you right now. Pre-assembled rails come ready for a dodge so if we have a dodge box this one's ready to go we can start installing it. If you do have a Chevrolet or a GMC or an F-150 we need to go to box 6 and we'll take out the 3 inch install piece. It will be installed right on the end of the rail capture and if you have a Ford Super Duty we'll be needing the 6 inch install piece also found in box 6. As we have a six and a half foot F-150, we'll be installing the three inch install piece. The procedure for installing the six inch install piece for a Super Duty is the exact same. To begin this process, we'll be taking the wiring, sliding it out with this plastic T-slot and just letting it hang off the side. And we'll be loosening up the bottom hardware of these rail angle brackets so we can slide the rail capture back. The reason why we keep the top hardware on is just so the rail angle brackets will keep position. Now we're going to slide this back to accommodate the 3 inch piece. 
be sure to actually feed the wiring through the rail capture just so it can stay hidden and protected. You just need to slide it into place. Once you have the install piece slid into place, make sure that it's flush on the end and just tighten it down. This rail is now ready to be installed for an F-150 short box or for a GMC or Chevrolet box. We'll now be sliding the rail capture hold down clamps from the front of the rails. And we'll just be positioning them into the center just prior to us actually installing the rails onto the side of the truck box. ready to install it. For our next step we're going to need our pre-assembled rail for the driver side as well as three F channels. Now on almost all models of trucks we can use the F channel as it's been shipped with the rubber intact. However on an F-150 we have skinnier bed rails so we're going to need to trim the rubber off of the actual F channel just off the side. As you can see a little excessive, about 3 sixteenths off. Prior to us installing the rail capture onto the side of the truck box, we're going to need to either put a 1 8 spacer to keep the rails off of the front bulkhead of the truck box 1 8 back, or we'll have to make a mark using our tape off of the front bulkhead 1 8 back. We'll do the same for the other side, and this way both rail and rail capture on both sides will be lined up at exactly the same distance. Now I'm going to lift the full rail and rail capture assembly onto the side of the driver's side. We'll place it so it's our 1 8 off of the front bulkhead. And we'll take our center clamp, line it up on the center. I spaced out my other clamps near the rear and near the front. They don't have to be exact as we haven't, we're not going to be tightening them down fully right now. So both, first we'll spin up just by hand to get a few threads engaged on the clamps. And this way we'll actually be able to hold the F channel in place when we insert it. Next we'll insert the F channel. So the F channel will actually be over top of the three bolts of the rail clamp. just loosely tighten it on. At this point I suggest checking your 1-8 spacing at the front just to make sure the rail capture hasn't moved. We're now ready to assemble the legs onto our rail assemblies on the driver's side. I've gone back to box six and I've grabbed two leg assemblies, two leg assembly base, base plates, two 5 16 three quarter inch carriage bolts, two 5 16 serrated flange nuts, and four self trapping screws for the base plates. We'll now be assembling the leg base plate and leg assembly. This can be done by inserting these two six inch long rods into the underside of the leg base plate assembly. Now I'm going to be installing this front leg on a F-150 six and a half foot box. We can put the leg right in the front corner 
on a Super Duty 6.5. We actually can't install the leg right now because of where the gas fill lines up and the molding in the bottom of the box. So we'll be installing the leg at a further point in this installation, which we'll go over later in the video. So by using the first two bolts that are lined up in this rail capture, that's what's going to be bolting on this leg. We'll line up the material right underneath the rail capture so it supports the rail. We'll line up the two bolts. Loosen up this hardware so we can get access to it. And we're just going to want to put these two bolts right inside. You'll notice that I have the teeth going into the rail and the rail capture. This just helps stabilize and hold the whole assembly together a lot better. Hand tighten those guys in. Once you're satisfied with where the leg is, which is nice and close to this front column for extra support, tight against the underside and tighten it. We're now going to attach this leg to the bed of the truck before drilling through. It's always a good idea to check underneath to make sure there aren't any obstructions like gas lines or electrical lines in your way prior to putting the screw, screw through the floor. We're now going to install the base plate of the leg underneath the leg assembly. We're just going to make sure that these two bolts are lined up with the channels of the leg material by sliding it over until we're satisfied. Once you have it in the right position underneath and the leg is relatively plumb underneath the rail itself, we can attach the base plate to the floor of the truck bed by using these two self-tapping screws. Now, instead of securing it totally right off the bat, we'll insert the tech screw, get it close to where we want it to go, recheck the base plate to make sure it's in alignment, and then we'll send the other one into the box as well. Once we're happy with where they are, secure the little box, and we can start pre-tensioning the legs. As I mentioned in our previous step, it's a good idea to keep this leg relatively plumb underneath the rail capture. And that can be done by just going to the rear of your truck box and looking at it so it's relatively plumb with the rest of the truck box. We're now going to perform one of the most important steps of installing your truck boss deck, and that is pre-tensioning the front legs. The way that we do that is screw the nuts up to the underside of the leg, and we'll go back and forth looking at the, uh, the rail capture, making sure that's one eighth above the top of the bed rails. We'll begin this by spinning the serrated flange nuts up into the underside of the base plate. Notice that I have to spin these quite a quite a bit up, and an F-150 has a deeper box than most, and that's why we we have more of the bolt showing. In a Super Duty or a, a Chevrolet box, the box is a little bit shallower, so you don't have to adjust these as high. In a couple of cases, this leg extrusion will actually have to be cut just to make this leg fit, just because the box is a little shallower. We'll begin by taking a half inch wrench and lifting this leg extrusion up, making sure that it's getting jacked evenly. And for spacing, just to make sure, instead of using measuring tape, I like to use a 1 8 thick piece of material, such as this angle bracket just as a measuring guide. You can pick up a 1 8 shim from the hardware store or something like that just to use in the same method. I've now adjusted the leg to the correct height and as you can see with my 1 8 shim it's at the exact right distance above the top of the bed rail. We'll take the half inch wrench 
and we'll just make sure that lock washer is engaged. And that will prevent this nut from slipping out and keep the leg from shifting down. Obviously it's a good idea to always check your hardware if it's ever getting loose during travel. Once we have those tightened, we can now remove these two flange nuts off the bottom of the base plate and lock down our angle bracket, which is right here on the leg. One of these will be tight just to hold it in place. Once we have those down, we'll lock it down with these two little serrated flange nuts and our half inch socket. And that's one successfully installed leg. Now that we have our front leg installed, we can now tighten our front clamp. To correctly position our clamp, we'll measure from the inside of the front bulkhead the outside of the clamp should be no more than 20 inches. We'll now take the F channel that we've trimmed to make fit into the F-150 and we'll slide it in above the top of the bolts and that'll help distribute the, the bolts over the, bed, over the bed rails. As you put that F channel in, as with any of the F channels, you've got to make sure that it's not going to interfere with the plastic protrusions that come from the plastic bed rail cap if you do have bed rail caps on. Once you have full contact on all bolts, now take a 916 wrench and we'll tighten these up evenly. Now that my F channel is in position, as well as my clap, I'm going to gently tighten these up. You don't have to go very tight because the sheet metal of the truck, you don't want to form it. Just go until it's nice and snug. And I know I have good contact with the rubber between the rail capture and the bed rail. Just make sure that you're nice and even pressure on every single one of these as it'll keep the truck boss from shifting back. Now that I have all of them at even pressure, I'll take the lock nut spin it up to the clamp and we'll just lock the bolt down. As with any of the hardware on a truck boss, it's good to regularly check on the tightness of all your clamps and legs. You'll notice on this driver's side rail that we have these two 5 16 carriage bolts locked down on here. This is for uh, an addition of a winch plate, a winch contactor plate underneath. It's not necessary for the legs. However, it just makes it easier if you are gonna be putting that accessory on later. If you aren't gonna be putting that on, just tighten down these serrated flange nuts just so they won't slip. And you can just leave them for future. We're now going to install the rear truck boss tail leg. It's very similar to the very front, except we're going to be adding two 5 16 carriage bolts to this lower catch channel of the rail capture. Fix the leg on. We'll now position our leg so it can be straight up and down underneath the rail capture. We'll make sure that our rail angle bracket is just off the rail extrusion. Make sure that uh, this hardware has been adjusted so 
There's no gap in between the underside of the leg material and the rail catcher. Now tighten up this hardware just to hold the leg in place. Satisfy that the leg's in the right position, the base plate's in the right position. Now that I have the top of my leg secure, I can position my base plate to be screwed down to the bed of the truck. As with the front leg, we need to make sure that these two jacking bolts are in line with these catcher channels as it will allow us to lock it down with this angle bracket. So we'll slide it over until it's, I'm satisfied with the position. Make sure the leg is looking relatively plumb. I'll take my two provided self-tapping screws and secure the base plate. I can now proceed to jack the leg up. As with the front leg, we're going to need to move our supporting nuts into position. This can be done by just screwing them up. Make sure it's underneath the leg base plate. And once they're underneath the leg, we take our half inch wrench and we're going to jack the leg until the rail capture, just like the front, is lifted one eighth above the top of the bed rail. Making sure that both nuts are even. Once you feel that you're close, we'll take our spacer and we'll make sure that we're jacked up above the bed rail. Now that I've adjusted my leg to support the underneath the rail capture, I'm gonna test for the 1 8 gap by using my 1 8 shim. As you can see on this F-150, we have 1 8 ridges on top of this plastic cap. I've kind of compensated a little bit just to make it a little bit above these plastic caps because it'll be a, a lot larger than a 1 8 gap on the rear where there are no ridges. Most truck caps do not have these ridges, so you can just have a uniform 1 8 gap between the underside of this rail capture and the bed rail.
Now that we have our leg fully installed, we can now tighten down our rear and center clamps. We're going to position our rear clamp approximately 12 to 16 inches from the rear column of the truck box. We're going to make sure that there aren't any plastic nubs from the plastic cap that are sticking down that would interfere with our F-channel. And we'll insert our F-channel above the top of these rail clamp bolts just to distribute the load. Now we have our F-channel in place, I can begin to tighten the, the bolts down. I recommend using a 9 16 wrench. And you can feel the contact between the bolt and the F channel. And as with the front one, you don't need to go overly tight as the rubber will keep it in position. But you do want it snug. And as with the front clamp, we want all the bolts to be evenly tight. Now that all my bolts are evenly tightened, I'll now tighten up the backup. Now move on to the center clamp. We're gonna, this is the clamp that we had started with. We had hand tightened it just to keep the rail in place. We can now loosen it and shift it into a position that's evenly spaced between the front and the rear clamps. On a long box, there'll be four clamps total. So at this point, we'll need to tighten down two clamps in the middle just to keep the, the whole rail assembly together. So I'm satisfied with where my clamp is positioned. And I can put my F channel into place. And I can proceed to tighten up my bolts. And again, like all clamps that are on Truck Boss, make sure that the pressure of all bolts is even to help distribute the weight. Now I'm satisfied that all the bolts are tightened down to the right snugness. I can put up my back bolts or back nuts, tighten them down, 
to prevent any slipping. And as previously mentioned, always a good idea to maintain, make sure that all of your hardware is tight during your use. We have now completed step one for the driver's side. The rails and the legs are complete. We'll now proceed to do the passenger side.